So now let's discuss Omnisphere's live mode. We can load patches into the main page through the patch browser. Click on the folder icon, search by category. Let's look for pads and strings. Once we select a category, our search field is narrowed considerably, but we still have dozens or hundreds of patches within the category. We can mix things up by pressing the shuffle button so that we're not always looking at the A patches first. But if you know what you're looking for, either by keyword or title, we can type it in and press enter. I'll type in lush. Narrows the search down considerably and we'll load lush ambient string orchestra. That's great. To load in part two, we can, of course, use the patch browser on the main page. But now we're going to take a look at the multi view. And the first tab in multi view is the mixer. We see eight parts here, each laid out with a MIDI channel assignment, and so forth. There's also a patch browser for each of these eight parts. You may have noticed I've selected the patch browser within the mixer. This time I'm going to type in a keyword without going to a particular category and look for those spacey sign arps that we used before. They were great. So I find spacey sign arps using this patch browser and loaded it into part two. I'm still hearing the Lush Orchestra when I played the PC-88 keyboard. Note that the MIDI channel assignments are MIDI channel 1 for part 1 and channel 2 for part 2 by default. So if I change the channel assignment of my Oxygen 8 keyboard to channel 2, then the incoming notes will trigger the Spacey Sign Arps part 2 in the mixer. Okay, so I can trigger by MIDI channel when the mixer mode is in its default state. Now we go to our Live Mode tab and turn on the power switch. We have two parts loaded in right here, and we can load additional parts right on this page by turning on the Mixer tab and looking for the folder icons that appear next to each part. So now I'll load in two more parts, three and four, directly from the live page. I'll load in a road sound and a dream piano sound to layer. So that's three places you can access the patch browser, the main page, the mixer, or the live mode view. Great, we have four parts loaded and we're in live mode. Now we can select a particular part simply using the mouse. When I select one part with the mouse, other parts automatically deselect. So when live mode is active, MIDI channel assignments no longer take precedence. Whatever is selected with the mouse will be sounding. Up here we can see there are four ways to select parts. Mouse, MIDI controllers, MIDI program changes, and key selection. Right or control click on any part to assign a note to trigger that part on or off. Enable MIDI note learn, press the note on your controller keyboard, and the assignment is learned. I've assigned the top four white notes on my controller keyboard to trigger the four parts here. So the parts are assigned and can be triggered by pressing the notes G7 through C8. When notes are pressed, any previously selected parts are deselected or turned off, making it easy to switch from one part to another. But what's really cool is that notes that are sustained either by holding them down or using the sustain pedal will continue to sustain even if you switch away to another part. This makes the live transitions seamless. If you want to play two parts together as a stack, simply press the notes in a legato fashion so that they overlap. Here I pressed B7 and C8 at the same time when I hear both parts together. But ouch, that is nasty. It's too loud. It's causing distortion in my host sequencer. Let's bring this channel strip over. We're going to go to our mixer try and fix this problem. Oof, nasty. So we see the channel strip is clipping. We'll go back to our mixer view and just lower the volumes of the respective parts that are coming into the host sequencer. Remember, in this mode, all of the different parts in the Omnisphere instance combine and come through a single channel strip in the host. So I'll adjust the levels in my mixer for parts 3 and 4 until they mesh. Now I'll check the strings and the sine arps part because they will be layered at certain points in the intro. So I'll lower the lush string orchestra, play it with the arps, which need to be pretty loud, lower them a little bit more. So now I have some great levels happening with the parts and we're no longer distorting in the host and I can take this out of the way. That's great. 
So let's see how this works out in practice playing a live intro. I'll start by pressing G7 to select the string pad. At the end of this section, I'll continue to hold a few of the notes of the chord while I switch to the spacey sine arps part. Now I'm going to switch, sustain some of the notes, and continue with the new part. Now I'll release the string orchestra notes and sustain some of the spacey sine arps notes while switching to the psych roads. Now I'm going to layer the roads with the dream piano by pressing B and C together. And there you go. In the next chapter, we'll look at some of the more detailed settings when working with live mode.